The settings you choose for your course have a profound effect on how your e-learning course appears to your students and how it functions for them. You access the settings from the settings block on the left hand side. Once you click that link, then you have a chance to check some general items. Make sure that your course is in the correct category. Check your course's full name. You can edit that full name to your satisfaction. Remember to save the changes to it before you leave the page, though there's no need to do so right now. There's no need to do anything with the short name of the course except perhaps to remember it. It's used in the navigation block to the left and in the subject line of course related emails. You can write a short summary of your course in the editing box provided and can format it easily using the editing tools available. Now we're going to take a look at some of the two of the most major choices you can make and they are what format and what layout you're going to use. You have four available formats, SCORM, Social, Topics, and Weekly. SCORM stands for Shareable Content Object Reference Model. It is a technical standard for creating units that can be shared across learning management systems. Unless you're importing a SCORM compliant module into your course, you probably will not choose this option. Choosing social will give you a course oriented around one main forum. This could be useful in a very free form sort of course where everything outside of class meetings is handled via online discussions which anyone can start. The forum can be edited using a single button. The most likely choices for format will be either the topic or weekly formats. If you have a course where you want all the students to be working on the same materials, content, forum, quizzes, assignments at the same time, then weekly is probably the most useful format. If you have, on the other hand, a course organized by objectives, which might take varying amounts of time, then the topic format may be a good choice. As you can see, the building an e-learning course is set up in the topic format. I chose this because I did not want to restrict the faculty members taking the course to a strict timetable. The second major choice you're going to make is layout. You're either going to show all sections on one page or one section per page. Let's take a look at the differences between those two. If you choose one section per page, this is the way your course will look. The title is at the top, then you'll have the news and social forums, and then each section of the course will have a title and a short description. Below that, it will also outline how much work is a part of each section, how many URLs, how many files, how many assignments, and this could be useful for students to help them plan their time. Now, let's take a look at what happens oh, when we click on a section title, you can see you've got navigation at the top. You can go to the previous section. You can go to the next section. You can scroll down through the section. And when you get to the bottom, you'll have the same navigation. Previous section, next section, return to the course main page. All right, so that's what it looks like when you're in one section per page. Now let's edit the settings, go back to the course layout, and choose show all sections on one page. When we do that and go back to our course, you'll see that the course title is the same, the news forums and the social forum are the same, but now everything in the course is in one very long scrollable page. Here's the start of the first section, which is quite long, and all the activities and files associated with it. And there's the second section, which is incredibly short, then the third section, which is longer, and then the fourth section, which is, again, quite long because it has a lot of activities. So that's the difference. I chose the one 
to use one section per page because it's a cleaner look and I think it's significantly less confusing for my course. All right, so now I'm going to change back so that my course stays in the same format, the same layout. You can choose the number of topics or weeks in your course if that's applicable. Um, and it will be driven by the needs of the course. So if it's a weekly course and you have a 15-week semester, you would choose that. I have a four-topic course, so I chose that. Your course start date will be driven by your school calendar. When you're editing your course, it's possible to hide or show sections of that course. A hidden section will not be seen by students. You might decide to show hidden sections in a weekly course, perhaps to show a holiday break in a, in a regular weekly flow. The news items to show setting determines how many items appear in the latest news block on the course page. Be aware that if you set that to zero, the news block will not display at all. Show gradebook to students is a simple yes-no choice. If you choose to show it to them, then they will be able to view a list of their grades in the course administration book. They won't be able to view anybody else's, but they will be able to view theirs. Show activity reports is the same, yes or no. Uh, if you choose yes, then each participant in the course can take a look at their activity to see a list of contributions like forum posts, assignment submissions, and access logs. And you can either grant or deny that. Maximum file so upload size is determined at the upper limit by the Learning Management System Administrator. You can determine it for your course and make it smaller than that if you wish to, them to have smaller file sizes to submit. Uh, you can also, at different levels of activity, choose to set the limit lower. So you might set a maximum upload of 20 megabytes, but for a one-page reflection paper, you might limit the file size to 500K or one megabyte so that students might submit a smaller file. In the guest access section, you really only have one choice and then you may need to do something based on that choice. Guests, if allowed, have read-only access to a course. They can't leave any posts or mess up current students' work in any way. They can't post in forums, edit wiki pages, participate in chat, take quizzes, submit assignments, add glossary or database entries, or receive grades or scores because they have read-only access. They can look, but they can't touch. This can be a handy feature if you want a, co a colleague to look at your course or if there's a student curious about taking the course and they'd like to look at the online component of it before they uh, enroll. If you choose to allow guests but want to be aware of who your guests are, you can add a password to the guest account for your course. Only guests you give the password to will be able to view the course. They'll have to enter the password each time they access the course. You have a couple of choices to make in the groups section. First, are you going to have any groups at all? And if you are, what kind will they be? If you choose separate groups, group members will see each other, but other groups will be invisible to them. If you choose visible groups, each member still works in their own group, but can see the other groups. What choice you make here is determined both by the design of your course, whether any group work is required, and what sort of communication dynamic you wish to foster between groups. You can also set group mode at a more granular, activity-based level. Be aware that if you force group mode on this page, it will override any group setting you make at a level below this. Under availability, this is kind of a handy feature because it determines whether or not the course shows up in a list for students. If it's not available, then faculty and administrators will be able to see it, but students will not. This can be a handy setting for a course that you're working on that's not yet ready. Once the course is finished to your satisfaction, you can come back here and make it available. The default 
system language for AUM's e-learning system is English. That is, at present, the only language choice available. In general, there's no need to force a language choice. If you do force a language choice, then any settings made by students will, not, will be overridden for this course. There are four basic roles available to users of AUM's e-learning system. Each of those roles carries with it a set of permissions to perform or not perform actions on the system. You can change the names of the roles to something which is more congruent for you and your students in the course if you wish. The renaming will have no effect on the underlying permissions for that role. Only the name will change. There are actually four more role names available for the course, but we're not going to be concerned with them at the moment because we're just getting started here. As you can see, at the bottom right corner of the page, there are required fields on the page that you must fill in. Really, there are only two, the full name of the course and its short name. Before you leave the page, review your settings and then press Save Changes. You will be returned to whatever page you were on when you first pressed the edit button. Don't worry, the decisions you make here are not set in stone. You can always come back to the edit settings page and make changes as needed.